With the character's left hand and fingers in place, you can now use the Bone Mirror tool to create the right hand. Double click the left hand to select it and all its children. In the Bone Tools dialog, use the Mirror tool on the X axis to duplicate the hand and fingers. Leave the Bone axis to flip as Y and click OK. If you try to move the duplicated hand to relocate it, you'll experience some weird behavior. This is because at this time both hands are linked to the left wrist. Select the duplicated hand and unlink it so you are able to relocate it. Relocate it to the other side by inverting the X value in the world or the view coordinate system. Notice the duplicated hand's name. The mirror tool, as usual, kept the original object's name and added a mirrored suffix. You need to remove that suffix using the rename objects tool. You also need to change the zombie underscore left prefix with the zombie underscore right prefix, as you did before when working with the arms and legs. Double-click the duplicated hand to select it and all its children. Use the Rename Objects dialog to make the necessary adjustments. Like you did with the arms and legs, you'll need to reorient the right hand so that the rotation of both hands happens more naturally on all three axes. When you select both hands and rotate them locally, they seem to rotate in an expected manner around the y-axis, but not so around the X or Z axes. Double-click the right hand again and go to the Hierarchy panel. Enable Effect Pivot Only and using Rotate in Local Mode apply a relative 180 degree rotation on the Y axis using the Transform type -ins. Exit Effect Pivot Only mode when done. Test the rotations again. This time the hands rotate in a normal and expected manner. Double-click the right hand and reset stretches on it and all its children bones. You need to invert the sizes, but do that one finger chain at a time. Invert the sizes of the hand, too. Delete and replace the finger nubs. Make sure you copy their names to the clipboard and paste it on the newly created nubs. Also remember to link the right hand to the right wrist. Of course, at this time, you only built the skeleton in place. It would be very hard to animate it except for doing simple rotations. Later, you'll learn how to give it more intelligence, making it suitable for proper animation. This is what rigging is all about. At this stage, you may want to verify that your hierarchy is set properly. You can do that by choosing Graph Editors, New Schematic View. If the display floater is visible, just close it. One thing many users find irritating about schematic view is that it always shifts nodes around in an attempt to arrange the layout. This can be frustrating as you try to arrange your nodes in place. Start by selecting all the nodes and then with a the right click choose Arrange Selected. Click an empty area to release the selection. In the Options menu, make sure the Move Children option is enabled. In the Layout menu, choose Free All. This makes it easier to move limb hierarchies around. On the top right-hand side, there are some nodes representing the geometry. You don't need to worry about those, as mesh entities will eventually follow the skeleton courtesy of the skin modifier. You can, however, use this graph to determine if your hierarchy is built properly, and eventually to fix any bone names you might have overlooked. At the top of the hierarchy, you have the pelvis.
Its direct children are a nub, a spine, and two legs. The leg structures are easy to make out starting with the thighs and ending with the toe nubs. The spine is made out of three bones, the last of which is parent to more limbs. Namely, a neck bone that extends a branch to include the head, and two additional branches starting with the left and right clavicles, extending to the fingertips. There are also two independent chains under each clavicle, one an IK chain and the other an FK chain. As mentioned before, these will be used to blend between the two forms of animation. Go through the list of nodes to make sure you have a properly established hierarchy. When you're done, save your file. You have just completed building a full skeleton for a humanoid character. Your next step would be to skin the character's geometry to the skeleton. When the skeleton is animated, the mesh would deform accordingly. This is the next stage in this project.